Having made the six engines, I then had to size them, mop them up, put them together in a way that would allow the frame maker to do his job. The next step would be to make the proper gear housing and engine plates. I've now got the plasma cutter out. There he is. I'm going to slice the frame up. And we're going to cut it in the middle. There is the basic setup. That is only 18 inches longer than standard. And this is how you get on it. Don't forget, this bike looks higher than it really is. It's going to be at least three inches lower. Maybe three and a half. It's on there. Easy fit. I'm going to make the handlebars a little bit wider and bring them back about another three inches. And that'll be able to fit on this easy. Get underneath the ferry. My feet are just behind the cylinders. Once the centres of the engines had been derived from the timber mock-up, I could then give those to the engineers to make the primary gearbox. This links all the engines together and provides an output shaft for the BMW gearbox to bolt onto. And what's in the... Uh... Oh, it's the idea. There's the gear train. Oh, we're going to take it off in a minute. Yeah. If you look from the other end, the other side, you can see of course there's a crank shaft under there. The um, crank ends here. Oh yeah. There's the crank ends, see on the other cranks. Yeah. So now we're on. Now the bolts which will be recessed. Just turned up at Chris Appleby's. One my key to chainsaw motor and one Ford Mondeo alternator to go on the end of that. The bike is now in its final form. Both front and back engine plates are manufactured, the primary gearbox is finished and the frame is made with the Goldwing front end and the BMW gearbox stroke suspension at the back. And over here we have one Daimler V8 distributor cap, one cut down Daimler V8 distributor cap, one arm and one ignition kit with eight tangs on it. I won't tell you who makes it as they wouldn't give me a free sample. That's soon all to fit essentially on here. That goes on there and whizzes round. A uh, amnilin piece, it's got the chamfer on it for the uh, end of the crank and a slightly modified Bosch distributor arm which I've just got from Halfords. This fits on here. This will fit on there and will have to be bolted on because the spring clips have uh, gone. That's the mounting plate, and that goes through there. Plate goes on there. It's got a groove in it here to take the distributor. Um, that goes on there. And there'll be a bolt inside there. And then this, in effect, just goes on there. And you can just feel the spring pressure of the central electrode. Obviously I have to make a centering piece for all of that. This is just a little spacing plate that I've made up. Um, it pushes on that way around. Well, in actual fact it has to go on this way around. Because that timing plate knocks it. This is the holder for the uh, interrupter. That goes on there. This is just so when I mount this all on the crank I can center it perfectly. This spinnies round uh, that way 
and uh, this rotor arm goes on there. Morning. Distributor is essentially finished. These are the brass plates to hold the distributor cap on, screwed into there. Uh, this is all done. I've got to glue it on yet, but it's stiff enough to stay where it is. I've looked at uh, these high tension leads. I was one time going to bring them out here, but they're going to melt onto the head, so they're all going to go this way. And the distributor cap is here. I've decided to bring the uh, the leads in the side. I have drilled and tapped these, um, but I'm just going to drill them out because it's too fiddly trying to screw the things in. These will get soldered on there, and then we're away. Well, there is the spaghetti junction. Not very tidy, but watch this. There you go. That's the bit neater. Four cable ties is all that took. And uh, Susie's is shaking. I had a couple of bottles of wine last night. And there's the distributor. Here we have the coil. Here we have the uh, pickup. Bit of artificial spinning. Nice big fat spark. I've bought two cores, ordered another four, and the rest of the ignition uh, system. Um, it's just a steel tube bolts in there on engine mounting bolt uh, two bolts there again on the uh, an engine mounting plate I've had the frame off and modded it slightly where it hit one of the distributor caps some of the holes weren't quite right and then here the brackets for the two cores are welded on there bolted together there with an aluminium spacer on top of there goes this aluminium section and go on about there and then on to there we'll go the ignition units right we've um chopped this down and soldered it on the end of this pipe this gives us a nice firm hold this here carburetor goes on there and that'll have a little bit of rubber on there just to clamp it on nicely. And that mounts the carburetor. Two hours later, I've now run all the cables. There's the top one, bent bit of stainless steel under there, which is handy because the tank won't have to cut through the cable. They all come through to the splitter, what goes in there. I'm now going to either solder nipples on the end here or just weld a little blob on. This is actually the uh, throttle housing. goes with this bit here. Off a uh, 500 triple. And the advantage is it's all metal so it's going to be stronger. It fits on there. It also has a, another little lever that goes in here. It's not on here at the moment. That would have been the choke lever for the standard bike. This has obviously got manual chokes. So what I can do is use what was the choke lever as the throttle for the donkey engine. Okie dokie, Friday afternoon. Just finished off the last nipple on the throttle. It's a little stiff, but it works. The last section of the exhaust pipe are the collectors. We made the collars previously. I've had the stainless steel tubing bent by a pipe bender and now I've simply got to cut them all to length, splice them together and weld them up to the bike. As you can see, um, I got it a bit wrong. I had to weld a bit of extra plating but it's on the back side so you don't see it and that'll all get ground down and polished up and I've got to finish off the rest of the welding although I don't need these for the start up um, I might just try and get them on anyhow old KH250 tank I cut the fuel tap out of that for the seven cylinder years ago but if I chop it down along here and chop it in half put the front half there the back half here 
and then fill in the middle, it might uh, at least prove to be uh, partially successful. I'll just have to make a little chop in it for the uh, cables. There is the back half. There is the front half. I've got some sheet steel out the back. Level that down there. I might take that down there slightly. And then wallop. <laughs>